the Champions League final. One of the most boring events <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. And that, there's going to be some people, I don't know if you'll say this, because obviously there was an Ita Italian team there, and you are the, the Italy expert that we bring on the show. But and it, it wasn't much of a surprise of what I kind of expected, but the you know the, some people were saying, oh, this game was uh, boring, and then some people were like, no, if you think it's boring, you don't know the game, and blah, blah, blah. But, you know... Even if I don't know the game, it was a little bit dumb. Let's not be crazy. I'm, I'm not going to shame anyone, but it wasn't a boring game. Okay. At all. It was. It was At all? Even the first no. half? No. It was, tactic it was tactically masterful, in my opinion. Inzaghi did what he needed to do, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I thought, you know, when you use a striking pair that he tends to deploy, which you can argue is a little bit old school or atypical, especially showing up in Champions League, I thought maybe we could get like Lukaku on earlier, if not the start. Yeah. And obviously very unlucky match for him. But, real quick, but when you say I, when you say we, are you, is it a royal we or is it we <laughs> like I'm I'm an inter what is what is what do inter fans call themselves? Interisti. Interisti? Um, Cause you're not interisti. No, you're interesting. Yeah, but not interisti. Thank you. I no royal we royal we. Okay, okay, I, okay. I, me, Christine Coupeau, of sound mind and body, <laughs> uh, was hoping a bit to see. I love Lukaku. Me full too. Disclosure. I'm I think an that Everton fan. I love he's Lukaku. Gotten, yeah. Uh, a tough go and has been unlucky a bit. And in this instance, for sure, the number of ricochets off that those posts was just brutal, confounding. Yeah. I, okay. Like especially when you look at XG, like it came up. I think two point something goals and. Not that I'm going to get into like data nerdery here today, <laughs> but if you're somebody that goes by that at all, or it means anything. Yeah. Easily, easily. <laughs> they, they negated almost any of city's attack. And I kind of knew when they were going into it, they were going to have to count on the counter. Yeah. That was going to be their way to convert to goals. And unfortunately it just, it didn't work out that way. My second plan of attack as you know, it, world football genius was <laughs> to ride it out and just defend so heavily that their force depends because I think that would have put us in a much better position. Yeah. Us. Yeah. <laughs> it's my team now. Yeah, yeah. I secretly but actually. When it's a Serie A I, team. You're just like, they're yeah. all my You're children. Rob Lowe like, with the Serie A right? hat. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> an Italian flag. On <laughs> so I get it. It's all Me good. Me going home and wrapping myself in my Italian flag towel. Um, <laughs> I think there were a couple inch so um the but but even uh, about that like some people were um excited about the storyline about Man City winning the treble uh and and just to obviously Man City fans I don't think in general um Premier League fans were like going for nobody was really rooting for City but I I was kind of I was I, I was rooting for the like oh maybe this will be a cool thing in in history to have uh, you know another English uh, uh, treble winning team and I'll I'll be honest I think after the final whistle it was just a little underwhelming I, I it didn't like it didn't feel monumental even though it really was the Champions League final is absolutely sig significant if 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 you make it to one and you win yeah. if you don't win I'm it's still something right yeah. But yeah, it kind of was a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it was a very divisive Champions League final though, right? Because people either just didn't want Man City to win or they wanted Pep to win. They were pulling for right, right, right. You know, yeah. Pep to finally solidify his place within the annals of, you know, world football like legends, which, right. mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's lines there in which you can kind of delineate like, hey, at which point is it enough? You know, how many more things does he have to win? Yeah. This is his second treble. Yeah. Life it's a man, two different teams. Man City generally feel like, um, not necessarily like evil empire type thing, but they, they're just, they're so good that it's almost ridiculous that they, they hadn't won it already. Right. So it, 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 because of the, the, the constant heartbreak that they've had in the last, you know, seven, eight years in, Ch in Champions League that, you know, the, the first thing I thought of, honestly, was just like we had like a World Cup final and and finals in general tend to be you, you want to play it safe. 
And and sometimes you just can't because the vibes won't allow it, right? Mm. There's just too much. Uh, players get nervous. Play, players make mistakes. And this is why I want to give credit to like Inter, where it's just like the the defensive strategy was there. I thought they really limited <laughs> Grealish. I thought they really limited uh, just they the, the wingers. Down Holland, which Holland, is yeah. phenomenal. Okay, we'll get into that conversation, but it's that alone. If that's your singular task in a match. Congratulations if you managed to keep him goalless. Right, right. But I think the first five to eight minutes of that match, I was probably more nervous than Inter were, and they went into it. <laughs> <laughs> like, full disclosure, they went into it saying, like, hey, like, this is nerve-wracking. Like, even they had even a joke on their IG that was like, oh, my gosh, they're putting out this, like, yeah, okay, we're nervous. It's, you know, right, whatever. right, right. Um, but I just, the first first or second big defensive play where Holland actually skied it. And mm -hmm. I was like, DeMarco, where are you? I was legitimately upset about that. And I know before you get ahead of yourselves where you're like, Christine, he was offside anyway. Guess what? That's not to my liking. Mm -hmm. I don't even want him to get a chance, okay? I want you hugged up on him like the big tree he is. <laughs> and I don't want any ball near him. That's not adequate. So yeah, the, I, I, it really just felt for whatever reason, um, just like, a, 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 a not a boring treble, but it just didn't have the like, man, I can't believe Man City accomplished this, whatever. I needed an emotional pep reaction. I needed yeah. sobbing. Oh, he sure. was too stoic for we me. We got him on all fours though, twerking. You saw that, <laughs> that picture? Was funny. That Everybody was funny. saw. <laughs> <laughs> My man was killing it. Um, obviously watching uh, Lukaku's girlfriend yeah, in some say, videos. Yeah, I was watching Meg the Stallion videos beforehand. Though. That's so we can. Uh, my thoughts on Lukaku. Obviously, I'm a, a big fan, and he's probably a big reason why I'm even an Everton fan. Um, but. It was kind of remarkable. The header that went down into the ground, which is like you're told every single time when you get a header, hit it down to the ground. The goalkeepers have a really tough time, but it went right into uh, Ederson's uh, knee. Yeah. And, and and then the other one where he he prevented the header from going in. Yeah. I was in the I way. Mean, so unlucky. pinged right off of the side of his own boot. <laughs> like it yeah. just. Because after the World Cup, he they had. needed to burn Sage at that point. Like, <laughs> I know this isn't a thing, but like, call a timeout. Somebody go down. Like, whatever yeah, you gotta yeah, do, yeah. but bust the Sage out. Dude. Because Dude. something is not well. It was brutal. And then after the World Cup, and we saw uh, Lukaku, even after when they when they won against um, AC Milan, and and the interview that he did um, uh, on the panel with the with with CBS Sports, where he's just so likable. You want him to do well. The guy doesn't have a, yeah. like a, a a hateful bone or negative bone in his body, and just and when he just can't catch a break. Yeah. And, and that's the problem is that usually they, me, they end up blaming him. I've been a Lukaku fan, quite frankly, and to be totally honest, I was extremely skeptical of him. But the second that I read his Player Tribune piece, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. was it's one of the few Players Tribune pieces that I've read and just like ugly cried all over myself. But that's also stuck with me. So mm -hmm. whoever helped him on that to get his words on paper. Yeah, like yeah. It was, you can write anything for me any day. It was beautiful. Well, he's a brilliant guy. Like he yeah. speaks all those languages. He's yeah, clearly yeah. very thoughtful. Like thinks a lot about like life sure. and you know purpose or whatever. It, it sucks that it happened, but yeah, it's, it's crazy just, too because these are the two biggest moments that like we know about Lukaku, right? Like in the World Cup and now this final, we didn't really hear from him that much during the Serie A season. He wasn't yeah. lighting it up. And sure. Now. Uh, I mean, he was dealing with an injury. Yeah, he had patches of injury that and, he uh, hadn't ever really. Fully he, he hadn't. He hadn't fully washed off the stink of that Chelsea exactly. jersey. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I mean he still has it. He's still a <laughs> Chelsea <laughs> player. He's and the coming thing is, like, back. Right now, it's expected that he's going back to Chelsea. Right, right. He's coming back. So no one wants it. It's kind of brutal. <laughs> it's, it puts him in a really bad position, though. Quite frankly, right now, because after coming off of that Champions League final with a very patchy season, a very underwhelming World Cup appearance. It's it's very. We need to do better PR for him. Yeah, we yeah. got to help our guy. <laughs> I mean, look, we're we're here to do Lukaku propaganda, bro. <laughs> cool yeah. PR firm opening we, up. Blank yeah, the PR. man is uh, just an incredible uh, player, and it's just he just always gets like a bad breakout. Even even when he was at Manchester United, it was like he was like one of the leading scorers, and everybody was like, "Nah, this guy's finished." He, he, he got so abused at United. It's crazy. That so I'm still mad at United fans for that. It's brutal. Okay.